Hi, I'm Adam. I'm the CEO of GameSite. We build uh, marketing technology for video game publishers to help them build their communities, engage with influencers, and measure performance. I will be the moderator of today's panel. Uh, why don't we do some intros? Sure. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Dodger. Uh, I started a YouTube channel about 10 years ago, and I am now a full-time streamer. Um, so yeah, I'm the, the content creator, <laughs> the influencer of this panel. <laughs> The talent. Yes. Yeah. And I'm the company hack. Uh, <laughs> I'm Brian. I'm from uh, Wizards of the Coast. I head up marketing on Magic the Gathering Arena, which is currently one of those top 20 games on Twitch. My name's Omid. I run a company called Online Performers Group. We do talent management for broadcasters. Manage like 67 or 68 people now. Which I think makes up like 20 to 40 percent of all the sponsored content work done on Twitch in a given year. Yeah, in a given month, we're anywhere between 25 and 40 percent of all the sponsored work. And I think Magic worked with the second largest number of influencers in 2018 that, for a game not named Fortnite. Allegedly. <laughs> so, yeah. Something like that. So um, let me kick it off. First question, which is why influencer marketing? Why does this panel exist? Why are we talking about it? If I'm a publisher, why is this a thing that I should care about? I think, Brian, why don't you kick it off? Yeah, so I think uh, unless you're making a game that is not viewable, uh, then um, influencer marketing is just, it's incredibly important for, for any game. Um, and so, you know, I think the reason why we talk about it is because it's a new field, and it's kind of the Wild West, and a lot of people are starting to figure it out. And so uh, that's what we're kind of here to talk about, is showing what we figured out so far. Yeah, I think coming from... Working at publishers and developers in the past, I used to work for Sony and NCSoft and companies like that. Uh, seeing how effective influencer marketing is compared to basically any marketing vehicle that we've had in the past as, as marketing executives uh, is kind of mind-blowing. I mean, we literally got to the point at one point at Sony where we thought our sales tools were broken because the numbers were spiking and we weren't doing any marketing. Uh, and literally there was one broadcaster with a thousand people playing one of our games that had nothing going on. And he sold so many copies of it that you know, we didn't understand what was happening. And I think it was at that point that we really realized like, hey, th there's something here. There's something more that we can do in this space uh, that really engages audiences with games. Mm. I mean like, we're, yeah, right now I feel, I feel like a lot of companies are trying to figure out how to engage with us properly, right? Because th there's been so many different ways to try and utilize internet marketing, and at this point now people are going, maybe influencers are a big part of that, right? And, um, and it's still, yeah, the Wild West in a lot of ways. Like, there's still a lot of questions about how to do it and make it effective. Well, that, that's my next question, which is in sort of what is influencer marketing in 2019? I think for all of you, you've been a part of this industry for a really long time. And so I want to talk a little bit about what does it look like today and what are the things we're seeing that's working? Yeah, I mean, we started OPG in 20, like end of 2014. And at that point, I, I looked at it as like, well, this is a hobby. This is something I'm doing to just help out some broadcasters that I met that are nice people that are, you know, I don't want to see get exploited by companies or bad contracts, things like that. I remember we did our first deal and it was, it took us about a month to negotiate and it was for a thousand dollars and we like popped champagne. And <laughs> now, like now that guy doesn't tweet for a thousand dollars. Like, you know, it's, it's just insane. The, the level, I think the realization that marketers have had of how effective it can be when it's done properly uh, and that it is really, like, like Brian said, if you have a game that you want people to look at, this is the most effective place that's ever existed for it. Yeah, and I think from like a business standpoint, uh, community tracks and marketing tracks are kind of merging into one. And so uh, early on, I think influencer management um, was a community track, and that was something that you did as a, as a community manager. But you know, as we look at where to advertise and where to drive uh, consumer sentiment and like where to like build their brand, then we're starting to see uh, influencers are a great marketing vehicle too. And so this is kind of like the merging of these, uh, especially as like even talking about uh, traditional marketing, um, you know, placing ads on websites. 
Most people use ad, ad blockers these days. How do you actually get to authentic people uh, and like authentically get to them and, and uh, just show off your game in cool ways? And that's where I think uh, like if you do it right, where influencer marketing can really move the needle for you. I mean, if you think about what, what a banner ad gets you on a website, you know, it's like a couple seconds out of the corner of someone's eye. If you think about a television commercial, you know, you get two minutes, 90 seconds of somebody's half attention while they're going, you know, going to get a drink or whatever. But you know, with this form of marketing, you can pay, basically pay less than you're paying for those things, and you can get two hours of solid content where the content is essentially the advertisement. You know, somebody is playing the game and they're making the game look good and entertaining and you know, showing that this is fun and something you should do. Uh, and that is the content rather than just these interstitial pieces. And the value of that is it's really hard to put a number on, but we do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's your job. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think just creating genuine content, like to, to focus on your question kind of more specifically, is like not that long ago it was we need to find whoever's the biggest person possible, right? We need to find the biggest person and get them to play our game and then it's going to make us millions of dollars, right? And I think now it's more specific. It's, it isn't who's biggest, it's whose community is gonna respond best. You know? And somebody who's much smaller could actually encourage more people to play a certain type of game because they look at that person and go, well, they play a lot of games like this. I trust them to know, you know and I see them having fun with it, right? Um, so there, I think, yeah, it's less about how big somebody is and more about what their community is at this point, maybe. Yeah, the fit is really the important. Fit, yeah. You know, because you can take somebody like Ninja, who's gonna have 100,000 people watching him do whatever, but they're all like Fortnite kids. You know, they, they love Fortnite and they're younger and they don't necessarily have a credit card and all of that stuff. And if you put Magic the Gathering in front of Ninja's fans, right, what do you think's gonna happen? Yeah, those two don't really merge as well as like <laughs> other games. And I think that's super important uh, when you're looking at effective influencer marketing. Don't go after, okay, let's look at the top 20 names on YouTube. Let's look at the top 20 names on Twitch. That's not gonna work. Uh, you have to start with your audience. So what type of game are you trying to reach? Then you look at, okay, who, uh, who are the influencers in that space? Uh, the content creators, streamers, uh, YouTubers in that space. And build it out from there. Don't build it out from who's top. Build it out from uh, who's reaching the audiences you wanna reach because uh, I've, I've just seen so many, uh, so many people kind of fail when they go after like, oh, if you just get Ninja to play our game, then we're gonna like make it. No, if you get, instead, if you get like 20 mid-tier streamers who all play a strategy game like your game, it's gonna be way more impactful. Yeah, we, routi we routinely see situations where somebody who has like 1,000 viewers, 2,000 viewers, will actually outperform somebody like Ninja, Dr. Disrespect, some of the bigger names. Uh, you know, when you look at metrics like click-throughs and engagement, because the, the audience is the right fit for the product. So I'm gonna go off script for a second because this is something that's been kind of in the Twitter news recently, which is basically paying streamers to, or content creators to play your game who maybe would have played it anyway. And I think sort of to your point about the, this organic nature and how we're gonna work with people that already like our game. Maybe Omid, I know you've been vocal about it on Twitter and I'd like to hear your thoughts first. Yeah, well, so this is actually a pretty common mistake that companies make. I'd say it's one of the number one mistakes that publishers make is saying, hey, these guys already play our game. We own them. We don't have to pay them anything. They're just going to do it anyway, so who cares? And then you go pay other people who wouldn't necessarily play the game. Now, it does make sense on one <laughs> level, right? Like, it's very logical. But what happens is you disenfranchise those folks that are your most loyal audience because they say, hey, I'm promoting your game day in and day out, you know, week after week, month after month, I'm playing Magic, I'm playing Warframe, like whatever it is, uh, <clears throat> and <clears throat> now you're paying all these like mercenaries to come in and you can just tell they don't care. And they play their two hours and they get their $10,000 and they just leave. And so what you need to do is find a kind of a balance between it where you reward the people that genuinely care about your game. You're repeatedly engaging with people that care about it at varying levels. And yeah, of course you want to bring in some new audiences too, but if you do it as part of a holistic plan, then, then you'll actually see that those new people coming in will generate value for the existing audiences as well. Yeah, if you want your game to last, there's two sides to influencer marketing. 
There is uh, paid promotion, start out, um, but follow on has to be from a community standpoint. How do you want to build long-term relationships with, with these people? Sometimes that can offset like, hey, yes, if, if like you have this top streamer in um, who's playing your game daily and maybe you don't want to pay them, you have to show them value, whether it's uh, like a early access event where they can uh, get you know, exclusive access to your content and show it off to, the, to their uh, community. Stuff like that that makes them feel appreciated uh, so that those people will stick with you uh, for a long-term period of time. And that's also where marketing community kind of comes together into, into one, so that there's a you know, handoff where I think you, you, your paid activations at your big moments, you have to have follow-through on like, how you treat them on, on a long-term basis. There may be one of those events going on for Magic as we speak. Yes, there, <laughs> there is. We, right now we have an early access event. We have, uh, I think, uh, somewhere between five and 700 streamers playing right now. Uh, where we're giving them, like, they are the first ones getting to play our content because we know how important it is uh, for them. And this is a, a fully, um, you know, we're giving them stocked accounts, but we're, um, this is not a paid activation. Uh, this is where we give them stocked accounts so kind of like all of our community gets to play with the content first and experience it and show it off to their communities. I feel like I can't comment on this because... <laughs> Because it's me going, of course, I hope that somebody who's making the next big point and click is going to be like, Dodger, she's our lady. <laughs> <laughs> definitely going to pay her for that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's definitely some value to, to looking at the people who have helped make your game big in the first place or ha who have already promoted your game, who have already shown interest in your game and saying, great, thank you, <laughs> you know, um, but... Yeah, and the last thing I'll say is the thing I like to challenge my team on is like, think of, uh, think of every content creator as like, okay, how could they make a business out of playing our game? Think of it that way. And like, that's, that's where you'll get to the most fruitful discussions um, because like, that's how they'll stick with you. If, if they can make a business, a successful business out of playing your game, that's how they'll stick with you. And that sometimes leads to sometimes paid, sometimes there's cool activations uh, to help them grow their audience. So I guess a follow-up for you. T talk a little bit about, about your team and what the sort of commitment to influencers looks like. And you talked a little bit about the convergence of marketing and community. So yeah, how does that look at, at Watsi or for MTGA? Yeah, so we, uh, we are in the process of building kind of our own influencer management division. Uh, we think it's kind of important for them to be, again, at that like center point between marketing and community. So we have marketing teams, we have community teams, and we have kind of an influencer management team who all uh, work together. But I think it's important to have like your your own single kind of points of contact uh, when they're talking with, uh, with your top content creators. Um, just because when they form personal relationships, that's gonna, that's gonna mean a lot to them. And then also they're kind of strategizing that space. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, I think it's gonna be uh, growing a lot in businesses in the next few years. Yeah, when, when we train new employees at OPG, we always tell them, there are three places that you can contact a game company. Uh, marketing, we love marketing because they always have money. <laughs> uh, they don't necessarily understand streaming as well as the other divisions, but we love that they have money. Uh, there's community. Community usually understands streaming the best of anybody. Uh, it's pretty rare that on their own they have a ton of money, uh, but they have a lot of spirit for it. And PR, which you know, PR has viewed influencers very similar to how they view journalists. So the engagement, getting coverage, all of that stuff. And what we find is that no one point of that triangle is actually effective on its own for influencers because influencers are different. They're not community, they're not journalists, they're not pure marketing tools. They're this hybrid in the middle. And if you don't collaborate internally at your company to understand that and innovate against it, then whichever one of those three points is your outreach point tends to fail. So that actually leads me to my next question perfectly, which is how, how should we be thinking about influencer marketing at, at, at a publisher? Is it UA? Is it brand? Is it community? Is it all three? Uh, I mean, let's start with you. I mean, you, you get approached by all these people every day. So obviously the answer is all of them, but what works the best? What are you seeing that works the yeah. best? Well, so our clients are very picky. Uh, they turn down over 90% of what comes in. A lot of it's not a good fit, or may, you know, maybe it just doesn't make sense for their channels, things like that. But the number one thing that almost always auto-disqualifies something is if someone's like, this is a pure UA campaign, we expect to see clicks, we expect to see installs, we wanna pay you per install or per purchase, things like that, because 
One thing you'll notice, especially on Twitch, is that the tracking and attribution is really not very good. And so it's almost impossible to actually attribute any meaningful amount of that to the broadcasters. You know, for us, when we look at the metrics that matter, you know, we have to look at what's trackable. And the most trackable thing is the amount of content that is consumed. You know, we see this many people watched for this long. You know, how many viewer minutes, how many viewer hours were actually consumed, much like television. You know, and the fact that it's an advertisement ends up being a lot like a television advertisement in that if it's for paper towels, right, uh, I don't suddenly go, hey guys, I gotta go, I need some paper towels, and we turn off the TV, right? I just go buy the paper towels next time I'm in the store. You know, so the same thing is very true in sort of live streaming and that kind of thing. A few years ago, I would have tried to disagree with you, but now I totally agree with you. So <laughs> I, for a long time, we tried to figure out, okay, how could influencer marketing become a performance marketing vehicle? It can't. Uh, you can't track the success of somebody based on if a viewer clicked on a link that was scrolling in their feed and then downloaded the game. It's not how it works. Uh, when you talk about, hey, how much spend should we commit to influencers, that is your brand spend, that's not your performance marketing spend. So treat it like, uh, like brand exposure, don't treat it like part of your, um, part of, part of your kind of UA uh, channel spend. It will do the UA. Oh yeah. It just won't track it very well. Yeah. yeah. And, and you won't be able to tell, uh, it'll be really muddy in telling which one's the most effective. You will see Lyft, for sure. Uh, it's just, uh, if you're trying to make that determination of like, this one channel is doing better than this one, uh, performance marketing will kind of fall a bit down on that. Any, any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> they're, the, they're the experts on that side. <laughs> well, I get maybe, maybe from, from your perspective, you, you get presented with all of these deals. What are the ones that you jump at? You say, oh, this, this is going to be great. Obviously, there's the, the fit of content, but beyond the fit of content, sort of looking at deals, what are the ones that you're like, oh, great, I know I can kick ass at this deal? Um, beyond, like, beyond fit? Beyond fit. I know, I, I prioritize my, my community and the sort of games that they want to see so much that a, a lot of times that's, that's just the There is no thing. beyond fit. Yeah. Okay. It's, for me, it's like, am I going to play this and potentially have a good time? What is the genre of game in the past? Like, how has my community felt about that type of game? Um, I ideally want to take a deal where when the allotted amount of time that I've been paid for is done, I want to keep playing. And if I don't see myself doing those two hours or however much that I've been paid for and then continuing to play, then I'll, I'll probably turn it down. That's typically, maybe, maybe I'm a small number in that, but that's. Well, I would say that you know, our clients feel the same way. They don't all necessarily, <laughs> you know, but they, they approach it the same way, which is, is this something that I feel like my community should see? Is it something they're gonna enjoy? Is it something I'm gonna enjoy? And if the answer to all those things is yes, then you know, naturally you just keep playing the game, right? Hmm. Awesome, we are out of time. That went so, what? That went that so, went so fast. fast. We are at a big, we have, I see a big, big red light and a bunch of zeros. So <laughs> I, think, um, I think there's a Q&A session somewhere. Yeah, also I think we have to kill some amount of you because of the red light. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you.